quick note before today's video starts, there are going to be timestamps in the description, so you can go to whatever patch notes you want to go, whether it's weapon changes, meta changes, or everything else, timestamps are in the description. What is going on guys, my name is Griffin, but you can call me Griff. Welcome back to another Apex Legends video. If you're hyped for Season 11, you might as well subscribe. We're going to be uploading here, as well as our other social medias, which are always going to be in the description. Uh, today we're going over the patch notes that just got released. I've heard some juicy things already. So let's just hop right in and not waste any time. We're going to be going over everything word for word in these patch notes. New legend, Ash. The new legend with a familiar face. Ash has overseen the arenas from the shadows and held a tight grip on Pathfinder's heart. A simulacre made from the woman who once was Dr. Ashley Reed, Ash is determined to eliminate every trace of weakness that held her back as a human. Detecting death whenever she goes, spearing enemies with electric snares that lock them into place, or tearing through space to take more lives. It would be easy to think that there was nothing human left within that cold steel. But a trace of the human doctor remains, and she poses a greater threat to Ash than any legend in the ring. Passive, marked for death, Ash's map shows the location of recent death boxes. She gets a special prompt on a death box. Use it to mark surviving attackers once per box. Tactical, Arc Snare, throwing a spinning snare that damages and tethers the first enemy that gets too close. Ultimate, Phase Breach, tear open a one-way portal to a targeted location. The portal stays open for a short time, during which anyone can use it. Now, if you actually... They released her character trailer today on, on Apex's YouTube channel, so if you want to check that out, I will try to remember to leave it in the description, but I'm probably going to forget. New map, Storm Point. The beautiful oasis was once an energy colony for the IMC and the ruins remain. Many have tried to make a home here, all have failed. A survey of the area revealed the remains of three unique settlements built across the centuries, but no survivors. The colony lay abandoned, only visited by the occasional pirate or castaway. Now the mercenary syndicate has plans of its own for Storm Point. It looks so enticing, but the pristine beaches and crystal waters are just the eye of the hurricane. All around, dangers swirl. Wild prowlers, venomous spiders, and the gathering storms only add to the tension in the air. Now the legends are here to make this place their own, so it looks like Storm Point is only going to get more dangerous. Battle Royale map rotation for the escape update, the map rotation will be back down to two maps, Storm Point and World's Edge. With Storm Point being a whole new map, we want to make sure players have plenty of time to master the new air arena. So there you have it, no Kings Canyon, no Olympus, that's uh, it is what it is. Arena's map rotation with the introduction of Encore, the arena's map rotation will now include only the custom-made arena maps. We will not be using BR locations for arenas in the escape update. New weapon, Car SMG. When you're in a precarious place, you need a dangerous, flexible weapon, meet the Car SMG. The Combat Advanced Round Submachine Gun is a fully automatic weapon that takes adaptability to the next level by accepting either light or heavy mags. The car hits hard but handles light. This hybrid weapon's the best of both worlds for when you're ready to take a stand and become the most dangerous thing on the island. Ranked updates. Hello Legends. Let's take a quick look at how Ranked and Emergence shaped up and review the changes coming in Escape. Rank continues to attract a large portion of players, around 40% of all playtime, but this doesn't mean we can look to make improvements. Ranked Battle Royale in Escape. Skill in Apex can be evaluated in all sorts of ways. It's the amalgamation of gun skill, movement, positioning, awareness, legendary mas legend mastery, and prevailing over everyone else as a champion that separates the lowly bronze from Apex Predators. With that in mind, we want to provide more flexibility and nuance to how players can express skill when RP gains are at stake. Before escape, measurements have been simple and straightforward. We grant RP based on kill points and a placement multiplier. Now we're easing back on some RP restrictions to offer other routes to max out kill-related RP in a match. Kill RP values now take differences between killer slash victim rank tiers into account. The kill RP cap, as we traditionally thought about it up to this point, is effectively being raised from 6 to 7. However, this kill-related RP cap can be reached in different ways, depending on tier differences and placement. Placement is still paramount, but you still must place first to have a chance at max total RP. To expand on that, to expand on the first point, tier differences between the killer and victim will be taken into account when calculating baseline kill point value. For example, if a plat player kills a diamond player, that kill counts as 12 instead of 10 RP. So basically this tier list here, if you are a higher rank, so if you're three ranks higher than somebody, you get three kill points. If you're two ranks higher than somebody, you get five. If you're one rank higher than somebody, you get eight. If you're the same rank, you get 10. If you're one rank below that person, that you killed, you get 12. If you are two ranks below the person you killed, that's 15. And if you are somehow three ranks below the person you killed, that's 20. Victims do not lose more or less points when killed in terms of entry cost. Only the killer receives the modifier. 
Apex, Predator, and Master are treated as the same tier. An encounter rate with someone of a 3 plus tier difference is ultra rare, less than 1%. Ranked ma- less than 0.1%. Ranked matchmaking is staying the same, so in general you'll come across identical tiers. In cases where you squat up with a different rank friend or merge into a different tier lobby, your KB will be adjusted appropriately. All tier differences are taken into account for kill points. A flat kill, a flat per kill bonus is added based on placement. You guys can read that. So final placement for 1, 15 b- bonus. 2 through 3 is 10. 4 through 5 is 5. 6 through 10. 10 is 2, and 11 through 14 plus is 0. Maximum kill point RP is 175. Any kill-related RP that exceeds that after placement and tier modifiers are added doesn't affect total RP. The final step is to add a flat placement bonus. Enough with the math. Let's explain these changes with an example. As a platinum player, you party up with your diamond friend and match make into a lobby with similarly skilled players. You snag second place with six, with six kills and or assists against diamond players, and three on plat players. Each kill you get on those diamond players is worth 12 points instead of the typical 10, because they are one rank tier higher than you. That leaves us with 12 times 6 plus 10 times 3, which equals 102 rank points. Now let's take placement into account. In second, per kill bonus is 10, so our 9 kills, including assists, times 10 equals 90 RP. We're curious to see how these changes affect the rank grind. Jump into Stormpoint, the first split, and let us know how they feel. Stay tuned, this is only the start of what we have in store for ranked improvements. Ranked Arenas. <laughs> we learned a lot from the first season of Ranked Arenas and are eager to bring you some improvements. Arenas rank now has two splits similar to Ranked BR. Along with each new season and split, there's a soft MMR reset and new placement matches. New seasons require the usual 10 placement matches, while a new split only requires 5 placement matches. Improvements have been made to matchmaking for finding similarly skilled teammates, reduce the AP amount gained for lo- or loss from MMR differences between teams. Patch notes, here we go, and it's only Watson. Okay. <laughs> Move aside, Ash. This is Watson season. We're ecstatic to finally share some long-anticipated Watson improvements. Her win rate and encounter win rate have always been above average. This could be for a multitude of reasons. Her defensive playstyle correlates to higher average placements. Watson mains are diehard loyalists, and her hitbox has been the smallest in the game ever since Lifeline's adjustment. Regardless, much of the high-level data that we share doesn't match perception. Play a few games as Watson, and you'll often find yourself wanting more out of her kit. The goal of these changes is to redistribute her invisible power into parts of her kit that shape the battlefield in a unique way. We wanted to see what changes could spark more consistency and efficacy. Efficient efficacy in her kit, and ideally, what the fuck? What? And ideally, ground some of the difficulties surrounded by the way her abilities work. We want to enable more active gameplay from Watson players by smoothing out the rough edges and placing fences. Responsiveness tweaks, longer range, and faster cooldowns means that Watson can much more quickly and reliably set up defensive positions, or even use her fences and pylon in the midst of open combat in a pinch. All right. General, improve the reliability and responsiveness of placing Watson's tactical and ultimate in world objects. Watson can place her tactical and ultimate objects on valid services above Watson's eye level, to a reasonable extent. General hitbox size increase to compensate for the removal of low profile in the legacy update. Tactical perimeter defense, increased damage on crossing a fence by 33%, 15 to 20, increased debuff duration on crossing a fence by 100%, 1.5 to 3 seconds, increased the time allowance to be hit by again by a subsequent fence affected by 100%, 0.5 to 1 second. Decreased reach hard time by 50%, 30 seconds to 15 seconds. Increased placement range by 50%. Decreased the delay between fences shutting off and reactivating after an ally passes through them by 60%, 1 second to 0.4 seconds. Watson now moves at unarmed speed while readying placing fence nodes. <clears throat> fence nodes can now be placed as soon as the weapon is readied instead of waiting for the animation to finish. Ultimate interception pylon. The pylon output has been slightly reworked. Reduce the number of active pylons Watson can place from 3 to 1. The pylon now lasts forever instead of timing out after 90 seconds. The pylon now has a pool of 250 shields that can be distributed to nearby players instead of effectively infinite shields. Increase the pylon shield recharge rate by 150% and smooth regen rate. So 2.5 seconds to 5 seconds or more accurately 1.5 seconds to 1.02 seconds. When a pylon is out of shields no longer... It no longer recharges player's shields, but can zap incoming ordnance. Taking damage while regenerating shields via the pylon delays continued regeneration by one second. <laughs> the UA on the ground and HUD elements now display the amount of shields that remain in the pylon. 
Pinging a friendly pylon will now display the percentages of shields remaining in the pylon. Pylon ordnance zapping has been moderately reworked. Ordnance is now zapped when the pylon detects that it would hit any surface within range and line of sight of the pylon, instead of being zapped as soon as it comes within range. As part of the changes, current issues where the pylon doesn't reliably zap ordnance, particularly concerning airstrike abilities and ordnance that bounce off surfaces near the pylon, should now be addressed. Thank God Watson's pylon, her ultimate, is fixed. It should get literally anything thrown at it and zap it out of the sky, which is Watson mains rejoice. That's all I gotta say. This season, the triple take returns to floor loot, and taking its place is the G7 Scout. The Scout enters the supply drop with its old friend, the Double Tap Trigger, equipped. Dual Shell. We have a new hop-up this season, the Dual Shell. Each round loaded into the Mastiff or the 30th Hitty Repeater is doubled. So yeah, simple as that. Instead of reloading one shell, I believe you're going to be able to reload two now, which is a nice little buff. Nothing crazy, but I do like it. Fully cuter rotation, add the Mastiff, 30th Hitty Repeater, 301, Car, and Longbow. Remove the PK, the Rampage, the RA-45, the Flyline, and the Charge Rifle. EVE 8, fire rate reduced from 2.1 to 2.0, but the reduced bolt scaling we've done in previous passes, the EVE 8 is still performing ahead of the shotgun pack. Hitting the base fire rate should help balance out our shotgun roster. Peacekeeper, slightly increased pellet size, choke up time reduced from 1.5 seconds to 1.25, and choked up shots remain tight for slightly longer when exiting ADS. Dev note, when the PK came out of the crate, we gave it a big sweep of nerfs to make sure the floor PK wasn't the crate monster we had all grown to know. In this pass, we swung a little hard, so we're giving it a quality of life and usability pass this season. Longbow, damage reduced from 60 to 55. We're walking back a recent buff to the longbow that proved unnecessary. We wanted to give it some love due to all the recent marksman updates, but it seemed the longbow was just fine. I think that's unnecessary, but what do I know? L-Star nerf, here we go. Reduce barrel effectiveness at all rarity tiers, significantly reduce projectile collision size, damage reduced from 18 to 17. Dev note, the L-Star has been a force to be reckoned with this season, so we're taking a big swing and hitting its projectile size and damage in an effort to bring it down a notch. Thank God. Thank you, Respawn. Thank you, whoever you want to thank. The LSR getting nerfed is a wonderful thing to hear. G7 Scout. Damage increased from 34 to 36. Double tap added to Supply Drop G7 Scout. Dev note. With G7 Scout entering the Supply Drop, we're giving it a bump to damage and adding back on the retired double tap to give it some extra spice. Early game crate weapon rate increased from 25% to 50%. Mid game create weapon rate increased from 50% to 75. Late game create weapon rate increased from 75 to 100. Pushing a supply drop, dev note, dev note. Pushing a supply drop in the end game and whiffing on a weapon feels pretty rough. We want to improve the reliability of getting cray weapons out of supply drops through all phases of the game. Don't worry, we're adjusting cray respawn rates accordingly to keep them in line. I I like this change a lot with the care package weapons because to be honest, they're some of the most fun weapons in the game. They're some of the most powerful weapons in the game, and I feel like I don't get to use them that often. So when you increase, you know, the spawn rate of these things in the care packages. And let's just use the gun more, and I'm just happy with it. Hot zone gold loot rates increase the amount of gold loot that spawns in hot zones. Dev note. Hot zones can sometimes feel a bit lackluster, so we're injecting more high-tier loot into these dynamic zones to make them more enticing drop spots. Crafting. Increased ammo from crafting. Light ammo. 60. All the ammo types are getting a full stack out of the crafters now, which I think is great. You have to use all three replicator spots just to get a stack of whatever ammo you were using, so I'm totally okay with having to pay up a little bit more crafting materials to get a full stack of ammo, because a lot of times you just don't have enough ammo for a gun you're using, and, you know, maybe I want to run over to this replicator that just spawned and get a stack or two of ammo. I think that's awesome. But yeah, crafting ammo price increased from 5 to 10 per weapon. Evo armor points from crafting increased from 100 to 150. Evo armor points cost increased from 45 to 50. Replace a sniper bundle with a shotgun bundle featuring the dual shell. Enemy NPC updates, Prowler health across the game has gone from 90 to 140, Stormpoint and World's Edge, Prowlers on World's Edge, and Flyers on King's Canyon now reward EVO points. 25% all damage done to AI now rewards progress to your EVO armor. Arenas. Supply drop. Supply drop will now land outside the first ring if possible and land 10 seconds earlier. Purple weapons now spawn more in the earlier rounds. Supply drops no longer spawn Blue Havoc, Devotion, or Gold RE45. Got some weapon price updates. The Mozam has been increased to buy across the board through all its tiers. P20 has gone down. RE45 has gone down as well. Prowler has gone down. 
R99 has gone up and the hemlock has gone down. Quality of life, UI teammates will now show that they are self-reviving on their in-game or their in-world game tags. Added a voiceover for players to communicate they're out of ammo. Cool. Updated the arena map rotation images to show up to five maps. Updated social awareness badges to unlock as default for all accounts. So those are your patch notes, ladies and gentlemen. Watson mains rejoice. You should be very excited <laughs> with today's patch notes. You got pretty much exactly what you wanted, I would hope. Um, maybe you want a little bit more, but I think for now, Watson's getting a lot of buffs, and we'll see where this places are in the Legend meta going forward. Uh, as for everybody else, man, I'm kind of surprised we didn't get any more changes. I'm not going to be upset about it. I'd, I'm more excited for the new map more than anything than I care about how the Legends are playing right now. We'll probably get some Legend meta changes uh, in the next collection event, because that's how they usually go. And then maybe we'll get a little change if Ash is too broken at, uh, off the rip when this season releases. But I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm just ready for season 11. If you're ready for season 11, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow my other social medias in the description. We're going to be posting anything and everything on this channel. We'll be streaming on YouTube here as well. And like I said, follow the other socials, man. We're active on TikTok every single day I'm posting on there. Instagram and Twitter. So yeah. But good evening, good morning, good night, whenever you're watching. Thank you so much. My name's Griff, and I'm out.